This is going to be under calm one, so okay. we are rolling for calm one in spring 2016 on June 9th, and we're going about to hear Alexis do a Alexia. calm, Alexia, don't call me Alexis, <laughs> <coughs> do her calm 102 make up on her debate group individual report and your group was fact value or policy 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 so as soon as i get the timer set we may proceed Okay. All right. Hi, my name is Alexia. Hi, Alexia. So Dr. Guy McPherson once said, if you really think the environment is less important than the, than the economy, try holding your breath while you count your money. This is a powerful statement and one that conveys sentiments I agree with. Before the debates, I was an ignorant alarmist, and now after doing all the readings for this class, I can happily say that I am a highly informed alarmist. Today I'm going to share with you all, first, my reflections on the debates, second, my beliefs before and after the debates, and third, what plan I think should be in place. So climate change, regardless of our differing opinions, is an issue that affects all of us, and for this reason I know that what I have to say will be of value. So first, my reflections on all the debates. The conclusion I've come to is that, the clim that climate change is a complex, multifaceted issue with no easy fix. I think we've all realized how easy it is to present convincing evidence for both sides of the climate debate. There is always going to be evidence that people will try to use to disprove what you're affirming, and there are always going to be counter-arguments. I've always been a strong proponent for mitigating climate change, but really without having done any of my own research or having to defend any of my beliefs. The debates opened up my mind so that to make so many more possibilities and considerations. To be more specific, I was strongly on the affirmative side in the debate about whether or not we should prioritize environmental over economic concerns. While I still may agree with that, I realize that we unfortunately do have to prioritize economic concerns to some extent because if our country's economy collapses while we prioritize environmental concerns, chaos would ensue and nothing would get solved. So I Thank guess you. it really all boils down to what we choose to prioritize. However, I do think it's naive to not worry about what the world could look like over the next century if we don't do anything. So now, my beliefs before and after the debates. Before the, belief, the, the debates, I believed that climate change was an urgent issue, and I still believe that. But I was shocked at how easy it was to find evidence that suggested that climate change was not as urgent as some were making it out to be. Overall, I'm much more informed on the topic, and I am now much more skeptical and see the value in doing my own research because it really is true that people can misuse data to say just about anything. However, my underlying belief in the danger that our changing environment poses has not changed. We're taking a huge risk if we don't act, because what if the alarmist threats end up being real? And now, what plan I think should be in place? Um, I think we need stronger, more environmentally centered legislation. If as a country we spent as much of our budget on green technology innovation as we do on wars, um, then, you know, then I think we'd be in a lot better place. We don't want to end up like China. Imagine yourself with severe eye irritation, struggling to even breathe because air quality has gotten so horrendous. That's not the reality I want to see myself facing one day, so I think we need to think bigger and think more innovatively. So in summary, I have shared with you all my reflections on the debates, my beliefs before and after the debates, and what plan I think should be in place. There should be no doubt in this room that I am a firm climate change alarmist. I would like to wrap up by reminding you all of the quote I shared at the beginning of my speech. If you really think the environment is more important than the economy, try holding your breath while you count your monies. So the choice is ours. We can choose to count our monies, or we can choose to try and support the environment that supports us. Thank you. Okay. Very good job. Uh, almost within time. Alexia, you have, you've mastered the ability to say succinctly what you needed to say in the time given. And so that was good. I love the doc, Dr. Guy McPherson <laughs> quote, whoever he is. Yeah. You know, it would be nice to say. To say who he was. Scientist or something. But um, it, it really, in 
just grabs the essence of the dispute, which is very nice. Um, you called yourself a high, now a highly <laughs> informed alarmist, which was clever. I wish you'd called yourself a highly informed alarmist at the end. You, you oh, called okay. yourself some. You called yourself a firm. I think you meant to call yourself a highly informed climate alarmist at yeah. the end again. On your SIG statement, you want to say more to all of you and you, you, you to mm -hmm. the audience and stress a little bit more to the audience. Your reflection on the debate, um, yes, uh, I think that your uh, research reflects what happened in the class. Many people came to have a broader understanding of that it's not quite so black and white and it's not quite so urgent as many are making it out to be. And as you point out, it's silly to close down the economy uh, to uh, save a minnow, uh, to put it in really extreme terms. And no one's pr proposing we do that either. So. Uh, you did a very good job, and you got full credit for getting getting this assignment done. So, Thank good you. job. Thank, Thank you. you. very much. You're welcome. Yes. Your speeches are going to go amazing. No, I wish you the best. Thank you, Professor Miller. Okay. And I, I'm sure I will see you in another class. Your classes okay. are my favorite. Okay, Alexia. <laughs> You'll see my face again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Bye, Alexia. Happy summer. Oh, you too. Thank you. Yeah, get out the other form. What classes are you teaching next quarter? Uh, Com 1 and Com 103, beginning extemporaneous and impromptu speaking. Okay. And Com 104, beginning debate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so do you want to just do them in order? Sure. Okay. All right, so respect is first. Okay. Do you have, you're, you're going to use your outline and then hand it to me, right? You don't have an extra copy to no, go I don't me. Have okay, it. okay. Good. Tell you what, just to uh, give me something to write on, let's okay. just run, give me those and I'll quickly run them through the Xerox machine. Okay. And that's the most efficient way okay. to do this. And we will. If you have a printer, I can just print these out really quick. No, I don't have a printer. Okay. It's just as easy as
What's the last three digits of your um, student ID number? 570. 570? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay, so let's do respect. guy a little bit. You're a little taller than Alexa. Huh. See ya. <coughs> okay, and we're rolling. Okay. So, respect. For me, respect has become something of a character trait, and much like my peer Matthew, was instilled in me at a, at a young age. In my family, showing respect and being respectful shows what kind of person you are. I remember in my freshman year at UCLA, I was taking a woman in power in ancient history course here, and I thought it would be nice to open the door for the woman behind me since we had the same class. What I heard next was shocking. Instead of being greeted with a smile or a thank you, what it, uh, I was asked, what's wrong with you? I'm a powerful woman who could open the door herself. She continued to yell and berate me for opening a door. I was utterly humiliated and embarrassed, and couldn't understand what I had done to receive such a lashing. The action of opening a door is something that I would have done for the elderly, a child, an adult male, pretty much anyone standing behind me. Since then, I have been hesitant to open the door for anyone, including the elderly, children, men, women, pretty much anyone here at school. This past week, I tried Professor Miller's experiment of communicating respect non-verbally, and I only experienced good and neutral results. When I, had, when I head up to tutoring near Sprout Hall every, each day, there's a janitor who I witness day in and day out working really hard. And as I pass by him, we give each other a head nod, which is a mutual sign of respect. This week, I initiated conversation with him, and he ended up being a pretty cool guy. We talked about Jordans and what new shoes were coming out, and then we talked about his work day and his love for the school. I respect somebody who works hard and loves this university as much as I do. He'll be somebody that I look forward to getting to know better through my years at UCLA and beyond. My neutral experience that I had was when I opened the door for a woman as I was entering YRL today. And rather than saying thank you, she walked right past me as if I didn't even exist. Now, although this may seem rude to some people, this is an upgrade from my last experience. My last example of communicating respect non-verbally was when I returned a classmate's phone to her and when I realized she had left it on her seat. Instead of just leaving it there, I ran to catch up with her and returned it. She smiled at me and thanked me for the kindness. My thoughts on this experiment are positive. It forced me to get out of my comfort zone where I had the opportunity to meet someone I normally wouldn't and in return, and return a blind to the original owner and instead of handing it to the professor. This has also helped me on my road to recovery or my hesitation of opening doors. Thank you. Okay, good. That was 228. Okay. Let me give you some feedback. I like your um, natural flow and style and delivery. It would be nice if you weren't you know, reading or using your yeah. notes. Look up as much as you can. Okay. And try to be extemporaneous as possible. Okay. Um, yeah, the opening thing um, was horrifying, and I'm glad you kind of mentioned it at the end, and, and you tied back to it, so that was a good tie back. And um, your um, uh, first example of it being positive, what I was looking for more uh, in the before you got to your stories was, so let me tell, give everybody a thesis preview. So I had this experiment, so let me tell you about the good, the bad, and the ugly, okay. see? Yeah. And really, uh, you know, drive that home. Give everybody always a preview of what you're going to do, and then do it. Okay. And at the end, so I've told you the good, the bad, the ugly, so hopefully I won't have any more experiences with you know gender studies, <laughs> uh, majors that don't want their doors open so now I know <laughs> you know or something I don't know I, I I've <laughs> the funny thing is I've known other gender studies students that uh, one was on the two that have been on the debating team and they didn't mind their having their doors open I so I think you, you just caught maybe yeah. one and you're having a bad day or something yeah. so anyway uh, so we got the respect speech done yes. thank you it is okay Let's go on to 
and I'm going to, I'm going to, I've given you the, everyone 50 points for the, um, for the, uh, intro speech. Okay. So, so now it's the film speech, correct? Now the film speech. Okay. For that first one, I, I tried doing that myself. I didn't know you had an outline, but for this, I found your outline and I ended okay. up following it from Yeah, I got it. You didn't, you didn't, uh, have the, uh. Because it was in the syllabus, yeah, but not the one that was posted online. Yeah. <coughs> okay. 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 My film speech. Vincent Camby of the New York Times said, "People don't cry in this film; they erupt." <laughs> Today, I want to share with you a film that really moved me. It's called The Champ. It made me sad. It made me reminisce, and it made me happy. This film deals with some significant themes that I know you will be interested in. They are father's love, being poor, and training to regain the heavyweight title. The first way this film moved me is it made me reminisce. The incident in the film that made me reminiscent was when the son, who was seven years old, wakes up early every morning to work with his dad in the horse stables. And the dad teaches him how to be a man and gives his son the best life he can afford to give him. The reason this incident made me feel reminiscent is because when I was seven, my grandfather was like my father and he would have me get up at 5 in the morning with him to go gardening. I would complain or get upset, but he would tell me this is what men do. They get up and they go to work. He told me he needed me and that without me the job wouldn't get done. The second way this film moved me is it made me sad. The incident in the film that made me feel sad was when the champ finally gets another sh shot to fight again, but he is older and out of shape. He takes the fight because his son and him need the money and he wants to be the champion of the world again. The dad dies right after the fight from too many blows to the head, but just before he dies, he tells his son how much he loves him. The son is crying at the end of the movie and is begging his dad to wake up. The reason this incident made me feel sad was because it reminded me of the day my grandpa passed away. From when I was 7 to 18, I had worked with my grandpa almost every day of the week. He taught me how to be a better brother, a better son, and most of all, he taught me what it means to be a man. The third way this film moved me is it made me feel happy. Vincent in the film that made me feel happy was when the boy was leaving uh, the, tra the training room where his dad's body was, and he takes one last look, and as he's doing so, he gets a quick flashback of all the great times him and his dad had. The reason this incident made me feel happy was that it made me think about all the great times my grandpa and I shared, and it reminded me of what a great man he was. In summary, I've shown you three ways that this film has moved me. It made me reminiscent, sad, and happy. After watching the film and doing research on it, movie critics and websites rate it as one of the saddest movies of all time. Although it is a very sad movie, it still tells a great story, and it really made me think about my loved ones, and I appreciate what they have done for me throughout my life. There should be no doubt in this room that this film, The Champ, really moved me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, it was a good speech. You followed, Jesus, you followed the... Um, outline as best you could, you would have benefited from having been in class every day and yeah. watched the other students do their speeches. And I still would recommend you go to my name online, you know, Thomas Miller film speeches and watch yeah. some of them and see the difference. Yeah, I was trying to do that. I was trying to go online and kind of see what the other students were doing. What they were doing. But you missed a little of the subtleties. Okay. So... We in the intro we want to start with a poem, a quote, a story, or joke. Okay. And uh, you start with a quote with your film quote, mm -hmm. which was we most of the other students put it in their um, significant statement. But it was okay. Okay. But since you uh, had your quote in the beginning, then you needed to tie back your quote in the oh, end. Okay. See. And so you need to say, so let's remember what Vincent Canby said. People okay. don't cry in this film, they erupt. So if you really want to erupt, go see the movie The Champ. See? Okay. So that's how you would tie it back. Um, is this what, what we were trying to learn in this speech was how to remember feelings we had from before, refeel them mm -hmm. so that our audience would feel them too. And then we're making yeah. an emotional connection. For this, I didn't know whether to go too deep or I just like I didn't I didn't know what how deep to go for this well you should have gone deeper okay okay so that's uh, the problem okay so um, 
So when you talked about the first emotion, reminiscent, yes, uh, and you uh, talked about your father and grandfather getting you up to go and garden, yeah. and you not being very pleased about this, yeah. and you said he needed you and the work couldn't get done without you. Yeah, that was just, that he was just trying to trying to get me to go to work with him because. Yeah. Because growing up, of course, you know that he could get it done without me, but he just wanted to teach me life lessons. That I needed you to finish the task. Yeah. And so, but the point was, and then what you needed to do was return to the emotion. And so when this happened in the film, that's why I reminisced about what my grandfather said to me. Okay. Return to the emotion. Okay. Say, return to it and say it aloud. Okay. And that's why I reminisced. Same with sad. Um, father die, very sad situation, sons cry. You talked about your grandfather passing away, and what you didn't say was you were very sad, you, how you cried, how you were, felt yeah. very desolate, how you were very upset, and yeah. relived it, refelt it. And then you can still say these words, he taught me to be a better man, a better son, a better husband. And that, and then you come back to the emotion and you needed to end with it. That's why he felt sad when he died. Um, that's why I felt sad when he died. Okay. See, it's not your fault you weren't in class to pick up these little tips that you heard me say to everybody yeah. each week. And so you would have just put that in automatically. So the same with happy. Boy training, quick flashback to all the times of your grandfather um, and the times that you shared and what you needed to say, and that's, get your hands out of your pocket, and that's why I felt happy. So then you say in summary, da -da 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 -da, and then the other thing you missed saying is there sh you, you ended with there should be no doubt in this room. That was That's your conclusion, but you want to have this uh, tie back to the introduction okay. and uh, you can jiggle those around if you want to the way you did it there you could have had can be and then that, and the, there should be no doubt in this room the champ really moved me but I think it's, it's better to end with the uh, introduction okay. Uh, uh, quote okay so you got the respect speech okay. done let me Oh, Excuse me, the film yeah. speech, yes. Just a minute. All right, let me get the next one. Okay. Next is personal commitment or persuasive? PC. Okay. <coughs> now, uh, just to... Um, on this personal commitment, the idea here, uh, I don't know if you watched all the class tapes, but when I went over this and explained it, this was where people were supposed to share something really very, very personal and private about themselves. And I showed, I don't know if you watched the tape of the sure. girl, the, uh, the day that we watched the model PC speeches, but this girl confess, I hate my body, I'm skinny, I have no breasts, I don't fit the American oh, yeah. model. She was very honest. And oh, we were supposed to include something like that. That yeah. in your personal commitment. All right, I could, I with could, the idea, I could with the underlyingness of personal. Like I said, you couldn't get that from reading yeah. the assignment. Yeah. But anyway, uh, let's uh, hear what you did come up with, and uh, we'll rock and roll. Okay. Zig Zig all right, my personal commitment speech. Great. Zig Ziglar, an American author and motivational speaker, once said, Positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking will. Today I want to share with you my personal commitment to be a more positive person. I will give you two reasons that I am personally committing to be more positive and three actions that I have taken to demonstrate my personal commitment. I believe it is important for me to become a more positive person, especially during finals because I found that other people like to be around someone that is positive and influence others to do, to do good and be positive as well. Also, negativity can have a negative effect on the body. You just may not know it yet. The first reason I'm personally committing to being more positive is because I am a stressed out individual. 
I like to think about the worst possible scenarios that can happen in a situation and think about how, they're, how to either fix it and avoid it. Now, a story that I have for this is I play football here at UCLA, and for me, if I'm going up against competition, I like to think about the worst possible outcomes that could happen. Like if he gets by me, what kind of move I could do, or if he gets my quarterback, how will my coach react to that, and how will he yell at me? So I just think about all the negative effects that can happen more so than I'm going to beat you and I'm going to win, and I need to start taking that mentality. Um, and my friends, family, and teammates telling me that unknowingly my stressing out makes them nervous and that I need to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have a negative impact on my friends and loved ones, so I feel it is necessary to work on being more positive. The second reason I am personally committing to being more positive is when I get worked up, my stomach starts to hurt. And I've learned that with enough stress, you can make yourself have an ulcer, which is an open sore in the stomach that can lead to cancer. I feel I need to become more positive so that I don't damage my own body. Third, I want to share some actions I've taken to achieve becoming more positive. Number one, I think about how I affect my friends and loved ones before I start stressing out or become negative. Number two, Instead of thinking about all the negative scenarios, I think about all the good things that may happen. And finally, number three, I found a way to find my zen and be calmer, relaxed, and a happier individual. Fourth, when I performed these actions, I felt a positive influence on myself and on my life. In summary, I've shown you two reasons why I'm personally committing to be more positive and the three actions I've taken to achieve this. I believe there should be no doubt in this room that, re that I really am personally committing to be more positive. My reason to become more, a more positive individual trump my selfish reason to be more negative. And I take to heart Zig Ziglar's quote, uh, positive thinking will, lead, will let you do everything better than negative thinking will. Thank you. Good, thank you. Okay, that was three minutes. Okay, good. Um, just so you know, the speech was supposed to be five, so you oh, could have... Oh, this was supposed to be five? Yeah, yeah, all of these were supposed to be five. Oh, I, I thought they were supposed to be and three at the... No, no. Five. And the um, persuasive speech is supposed to be seven. Okay. But you would have picked that up in class, okay. too, or a closer reading of the syllabus. But um, not to worry. Okay. Um, Zig Ziglar, an American author and motivational speaker, and so that, that's, that's, that's a good guy to quote. And you quoted him with positive, uh, a positive thinking quote, and you tied back to that. So that was excellent. Um, what wasn't as clear as your thesis preview, you didn't say as clear as you wanted. Today I want to share with you my personal commitment to be more positive. I'm going to give you, with you I'm doing it now with more with the vo voice okay. I was looking for. I'm going to give you two reasons. Okay. And three actions that I will show you will demonstrate my personal commitment. Instead of reading, I'm going to share with you my personal commitment to be more positive. I'm going to give you two reasons and three actions. Okay. Just, did you see the difference? Yes. Yeah. So you work on an emphatic okay. style of delivery, okay? Okay. So, mm, on the uh, mm, significant statement, uh, you uh, talked about how it's negatively impacting uh, because I found that other people around me don't like me to be so negative. But remember, a significant statement is significant to the audience. And so you want to say, this is a significant speech to all of you because I know some of you get down and get negative on yourself oh, okay. and you'll want to learn the ways to be positive so you'll enjoy my speech today because okay. it'll apply to you. Okay. Yeah. So on the, um, your first reason why you want to be, uh, you're committed, you're personally committed to being more positive is that you're a stressed out individual and you're making people nervous, and then you told a story about worrying about mm, football plays and uh, uh, the opponents getting past you and hurting your quarterback and your coach yelling at you, and you um, worrying about that, and that's making the other people nervous as you stress about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
that was okay. That was that was compelling, and that was kind of personal and private. So, okay. so we we're getting we we're starting to get warm on the something personal about you and yourself. Okay. So that was good. The second one, though, less so. You you didn't really develop it very well, and you didn't really say much personal. You just said, "My stomach starts to hurt," and I to get an ulcer. You didn't say, I've had stomach problems, I have to take medicine for it, or anything like that, or a little, 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 little. it gets so bad I can't keep food down, or little, little. I'm making it up now, but yeah. you know that would be something very personal, so elaborate. private, elaborate on it. And so that's the second reason, I want to make myself sick by, by you know, having this negative voice, you know, have this negative tape going on in my head all the time. Oh, it's going to go bad. Oh, it's going to go bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, um, and then the other thing is just is make your narrative more mm, prominent. So, see, so, 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 so you've got one, two, three. So, third, okay. I want to share some actions that I've taken to become more positive. Okay, yeah. Third hour takes some more actions that I've been more positive. What the fuck? I have to pull the meaning <laughs> out of there, see? Yeah. The way you say it. Yeah. Right? So third, I want to share some actions I have taken to achieve to become more positive. Okay. Right? Uh and then you say, uh, I think about my friends and I think about my loved ones before I start stressing out. Um, you try to think of, you said you start thinking of positive scenarios instead of uh, ne negative ones, mm -hmm. and you found a way to find your zen, and that's good. I hope it's with mindfulness or with meditation, something, yeah. something you should do maybe 20 minutes twice a day to sort of get off the merry-go-round you're on, because you seem to be a pretty, on a pretty intense merry-go-round with all the structured activity they have for you up there. You, yeah. know, you need a chance to get off of it, you know, for 20 minutes every day. Uh, your summary, your conclusion was fine, and your tie back to Zig Ziglar was fine. My only complaint was, you know, it was a little short, and okay. then, of course, the things I mentioned. But you got the job done. Okay. Thank you. Uh, oh, we have one more. One correct, more, yeah. Persuasive. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm sorry for them not being longer. I thought that, I thought they were supposed to be around three to three to five minutes. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. Uh, and this is supposed to be uh, seven minutes. Uh, part of they were that we were going three to five. We were going three to five when the dean uh, in, increased the um, workload and said that I, we had to carry thirty five in the class. Which, uh, and if we were carrying thirty five, we wouldn't have gotten to everybody. Okay. And so, fortunately, people drop when they saw the workload, which was my plan. Oh, uh, okay. Because they didn't want to do all the work, so, which was fine. You know, yeah. I don't want any lazy students in my class anyway. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, you've done your two papers, right? Huh? Two papers. Yeah, you've done the, evaluated a live speaker, and you've done the sticky final. The sticky final I'm almost done with. I'm going to be turning it into your box tomorrow. I have a live speaker. I do not know about that one. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll have to talk about okay. that after you do your persuasive okay. speech. Okay. Okay. So now, my persuasive speech. Okay. Charlemagne. Hang on, hang on just a okay. second. Let me get my uh, copy. Okay. 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 Charlemagne, ex king of the Franks, once said, To have another language is to possess a second soul. I firmly agree with this statement because to understand a second language is to understand another culture and their way of life, and in return, possess a second soul. Today, I want to persuade you to learn a second language. I'll present two reasons and offer actions and benefits that will allow you, uh, that you, if you follow, you will adopt my proposal. To learn a second language will not only change the way you see the world, it will also further improve and develop your brain. The reason that I feel you should learn a second language is it will stave off dementia. According to BBC News, being bilingual could delay the onset of dementia by several years. Now, dementia runs on my mother's side of the family, and my great-grandmother suffers from dementia. 
So I feel more comfortable growing old with this knowledge because I am fluent in Spanish. Great. The second reason that I feel you should learn a second language is it significantly improves cognitive abilities. BBC News also reports that the strongest effects were seen in general intelligence and in reading. Third, I want to propose some concrete actions that you might take. Number one, purchase Rosetta Stone if you can and practice every day or whenever you have the time available. Number two, take language classes at your school and really try to learn and understand the language and apply it to, you, to your life. Three, if you have a family member at home that speaks a foreign language, have them talk to you in that language rather than English. Now, when you have performed these actions, you will in the very least have a basic understanding of your desired second language. Plus, according to Men's Fitness, knowing a foreign language makes you more attractive. French ranks as the sexiest, followed by Italian and Spanish. <laughs> there should be no doubt in this room that you should learn a second language. Being bilingual instead of monolingual will not only change the way you see the world, it will also further, further develop your brain and improve your lifestyle. Now, I'm still going to take to heart, executing Frank Charlemagne's quote, to have another language is to possess a second soul, because I firmly believe that I possess a second soul. Thank you. Okay, good. All right, well, um, let me uh, comment on your persuasive speech. Okay. Stand up there while I comment. Yes, sir. Um, Charlemagne, the ex-king of the Franks, Franks is capitalized, capitalized. Okay, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, um, good quote, mm -hmm. and uh, it was relevant to what you were advocating, which was very good, and you tied back to it. So that you understand the bookends and the tie back. So that's excellent. Uh, and I like the idea of the second soul. That, that's, <laughs> everyone's leaving early. Um, so it was. This is again where you know I'm looking for more imp style of delivery. Second language. Okay. Two reasons, some actions, some benefits, okay. see? If you follow my proposal. Okay. So, uh, and your thinking of saying it was a little short, but still it was more to the point of it will further improve and develop your brain. So you were talking about them, and so that was good. Okay. On your first reason, whenever you're going to make an argument from authority, you need to have a bibliography in the back. Okay. And needed to be APA style, and that's the same with the um, the uh, research paper that you're doing on a live speaker. Okay. And then um, the um, on the. Um, so you had the BBC News, you needed to say, in 2016, okay. reported okay. in a study okay. done at okay. Manchester University, build it up, give it credibility, the BBC said, <laughs> okay, I being bilingual will get rid of dementia. <laughs> yeah, not very impressive the way you presented it, okay. see. Uh, so, so build up your argument from authority, give it authority, and then make it work. Okay. Okay? Uh, I like then your personal story after your evidence about dementia running in your family and you thinking that you're going to um, avoid it. And so that's um, God bless you and you know, keep you. So, um, your second reason was the whole notion of improving cognitive ability, and which I, I'm assuming this is the same BBC News yes. report. I was going to elaborate on it, but yeah. I couldn't come up with anything on the spot. Yeah. And um, here again, it would have been excellent if you had a new source or mm -hmm. a different source, the New York Times or a more scholarly journal. Okay. But, uh, 
And once again, we had a library lecture where Mickey Gorell taught us how to surf the deep internet and find better stuff uh, on the deep internet, on the web, okay. that would um, help uh, you be a better researcher. Okay. On your actions, Rosetta Stone, sure. Uh, you could also say if you can't afford Rosetta Stone, you can check language things out at the library, okay. take classes here at UCLA. They're required for many majors. And um, the thing about having family members speak the language at home was good. Some family members, you know, they're trying to assimilate them. I gotta get rid of that Turkish. Or yeah, I've heard, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, we're not going to do that here. I think you should keep true to your heritage. I think that's, that's great. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I did too, but, you know, there's... I, I understand both sides yeah. of that, you know. And I understand that, you know, people make fun of people that can't speak or understand mm. English, so yeah. I understand you got to get that competency down too. Yes. When you perform these actions... Uh, could have been stronger by stressing better benefits. Your, th your quote from Men's Fitness, again, no date, okay. um, was sort of a throwaway, you, you'll be sexier. Okay. Uh, I guess that's for the men in the room. I just want to throw all something like, funny about all Hardy. three thing, funny, man. okay, yeah. that's fine, yeah. And then you went with there's no doubt in your room and then you tied it back. So it was short. And you missed the uh, basic idea of learning to make an argument from authority okay. by researching, having a claim, that's an assertion, followed by a, a piece of evidence that, that, uh, uh, that says what your claim uh, is claiming is true, that an expert believes it true, and, okay. a, and you explain the, the expert, or the expert explains the reason that it's true, see? Okay. So, uh, and that's the, those are the three parts to a good argument, an assertion, the reasoning, and the evidence. Okay. And that's what you want to get out of this. So, you got this one done. Okay. So, that's done now. Okay. So, let's Mark that down. Now, you've taken the midterm, right? I've done the midterm and the bubble final as well. Now, um, where is, where do I have that? Did you turn that in to me or did you the, give that to the final, Elizabeth? I gave, the final I gave to Catherine to give to you because I had a doctor's appointment that morning. The mid And the midterm, I believe I handed that in to you myself. Wait, 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 wait. You, you turn to the midterm with the whole group? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll have to fish it up. Okay. Did, did she tell you what your score was? Uh, no, she did not. I even asked her, and she said she had not gotten her score yet either. But that was last week. Okay. And the final... The, the final, I handed that to her to give to you. So it came in with the rest of the scores, too? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, uh, final group. Okay, good. All right. Uh, so we, you're, uh, when will you get me the uh, uh, sticky uh, paper? I can get that to you tomorrow or Saturday, whenever, you, whenever you'd like. Yeah. Okay, well... Um, how will you get it to me on Saturday? You're going to email it to me? I or? can come in here and put it in your mailbox if you, you want. You can't get into the building on okay. Saturday. Uh, I'm going to be um, at graduation here on Sunday in Royce Hall. Okay. I'm going to be here Sunday as well. My uh, uh, Is this going to be open on Sunday? This room was not, but I'll be in Royce Hall at, from 10 to 12. My My best friend is graduating on Sunday, so I'll be here. From 10 to 12? Yes. Do you want to try to find me and give it to me or something? Or? Yes, let me put that in my, in my phone. Okay. Um, the other thing is maybe it's easier if you email it to me. Okay, whatever, whatever you like is fine.
that seems easier and then I'll just have to print it out. Okay. Uh, uh, just so you'll know, I don't want to give you a heart attack or anything, but um, I passed around, did, did Catherine, is that your study, Betty? Yes. I passed around a model, did she tell you, of the... Uh, that's, why I'm that so, I, that's why I'm so confused, because she hasn't really... Yeah, okay. There's a model exam on the website. Here, okay. we can go to it right now, in fact. I'll show it to you. Um, so, um, let's see. Let's just see if we... Uh, and then we have to just do the... Um, no, what's the live speaker? I don't know what that is. Okay, um, I'll show you. That is also the... Assignment is detailed. The prompt is on the website. Do you not have the syllabus, or I not, no, I don't have the syllabus. Oh, Cause, I see. Because when 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 you were passing them out to other students, you didn't have an extra one for me. You said you'd get to me some other time. Oh, I see. Let's see so, if uh, let's see if what's her face is still here. Email oh. sticky and live. Because I'm down to one. And still here. Live speaker on oh, Sunday. Still here. All right, good. All right. <sighs> oh, boy. Okay. Well, um, let's see. I guess. I guess. I guess the first thing we should do is get you the syllabus before the girl goes home at five, which is in about. 14 minutes. Okay. So, why don't we turn this off and